I worked in a hospital when I was in school. This was when I was very young. When, when you didn't go to school anymore, then they had to find something for you to do. And that's what I did. That's what a lot of kids did. Or you scrubbed floors or anything that was, you know, needed doing. You worked in the kitchen. I didn't mind the kitchen because the cook that was there, she made us cook things sometimes, not just scrub pots and wash floors. How long did you live in Tuck for? Fifteen years. And then you moved to? Then I left Tuck and I married my second husband and moved to Hay River. And you lived there for? I left Hay River for a year before I moved out here, and I'd been out here nearly four years. I uh, moved to the cabin when my, when my husband bought a home for our grandson who lives out here to be with him. And I'm not a city person, so I went to the cabin with the intention that I'd come and spend some time out here, and they'd also come and spend time at the cabin, which was good, which was a very good way of life if it could have happened. But not too long after that, my husband was diagnosed with cancer. So I, I took care of him. And I know a lot of people have lost family through cancer. It's not an easy thing. So whoever you are, enjoy your partners. But some of the things that happened while I lived in Tuck, I met the queen and her whole family. My, my family met the Queen and her whole family. And then I went to Coppermine and met uh, the Governor General Michener and his wife, and I became her lady-in-waiting. So I've, I've had a very interesting life. It's never been boring. And I like to sew anything and everything. At the moment, I like doing beadwork. I'd like to start making uh, beaded pictures more than... It's so expensive to buy moose hide now, so I thought, well, why not make beaded pictures or make uh, quilts, but a different kind of quilt, not something that you see mm -hmm. all the time. So maybe when I finish one, then, then I'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'll give ideas to somebody else. <laughs> you know <He's> women. <laughs> you know women. They don't like to give their sewing secrets yeah. away. <laughs> Something else we used to love doing was uh, in Reed Island was Christmas and Easter's were beautiful times. The women would sew from about the middle of September to get everything ready for each member of the family so everybody had new shoes, not shoes, mucklucks, kaukat, 
<laughs> and parky covers. Same with the men. And then the square dancing that went on all night. Did you like to dance? Oh, yes, very much. What Johnny was, was, I like to jig. Johnny was a good dancer. So, and I like the square dancing too. And then, then the older people with their drums would come. So, what we used to do was we'd miss having a square dance one night so we could watch the drum dancing. And the older people would do that. And there was always plenty to eat. There was a man by the name of Outlatak. He impressed me the most. My uh, Auntie June Klinkenberg, that's her dad. They used to put this headdress on. It had a tulik beak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some other things on it, and they would sing, you know, special songs and beat on the drum. And he impressed me more than anybody else. I never understood what they were saying, though. To this day, I still don't understand the songs. I would watch my grandparents, my, not so much my grandfather, but my grandmother. She liked that. My grandparents moved to Reed Island. I had Gordon, Peter, David. David is the one my Aunt June adopted. And I think I had John, and they moved to uh, to Reed Island, maybe before that. But in the winter, tr- sometimes trapping and hunting wasn't so good. So, uh, you know, it wasn't easy for people that couldn't go trapping, like my grandfather and grandmother. They were old. So one morning I went over to their place and I said, come over for breakfast. And when they came, I says, you're not going back. I says, it's too cold in the tent where you're living. And uh, our house was big enough, so I built a sort of a bedroom for them. (laughs) And they stayed with us. I really enjoyed them. You know, of all the people I've met in my life, they influenced me the most. They were so in love and so happy, yet they have, they didn't have half of what we had today. They never wished for anything. And when I moved them to my house, I said, you can stay for as long as you like. I learned more from them, too, than from anybody else I'll ever learn from. And my grandfather died in Fort Smith. He had cancer in the stomach, so he was there for quite a few years. And in those years, the government still didn't bring people to die at home like they do now or you can visit family. They didn't do that then. 
Oh, I used to wish that I could take Grandma there. And before she died, she says, I need you to make me a promise. And I said, I'll do it. I didn't even know what it was. But I knew she wasn't going to ask for the impossible, not somebody who never wished for anything. She says, when you have grandchildren, I want you to name your grandfather and me, your grandmother into one family. The same person must have us, and you can give us, give those names. So when Sally, my daughter, had a little girl, I asked her if it was OK to name her Nelika. That's my grandmother. And now she has a little boy, and that's Utwayo, my grandfather. And my grandmother says, you do that for me, and we'll be very happy, because we'll be together. Nalika and Utwayo. I've told my kids that I was born in a snow house. They didn't believe that. <laughs> but I was. <laughs> and that was in Mintlenma for you, mm -hmm. in a snow yeah. house. Yeah, out on the ice. People being very nomadic then, following where the food was, the food source. If there was no caribou inland, then they'd stay closer to the ocean part because of the seals. And they were out on the ice in a snow house, and that's where I was born. I would love to say hi to Sarah Mangilana. I hope she's listening. Her and I were very, very good friends. And I think of her often, as I do a lot of other people, but I just hadn't spoken to her for so long. For us being so close, I haven't spoken to her for... When I was looking after my husband for three years here, before he died, I, I lost touch with everyone except the immediate family. So... And to Joanne in Copper Mine, and Nivingarlutku, Uluhak, and Bertha, just take care of yourselves, keep good energy around you. And if you have to drag one leg like <laughs> me when you're mowing the lawn, that's OK, too. It still gets done. <laughs> God bless you all, and take care. <laughs> Kanaktun ino ni ako ti minik umang me. Well, my mom said that I was born in Lady Harbor. I never seen that place. Mm -hmm. 1928. Mm -hmm. I don't know from there where we went. I don't know much. Mm -hmm. I never sleep. 
And what about your mom and dad? Who is your mom and dad? My mom and dad was Rebecca and Isaac. And where, where they stayed? They both died long ago. I don't know my dad. Mm -hmm. While I was still little, my dad died. When you were still young, your dad passed away? Yeah, I was about, Mom said that was two or three years old. Mm -hmm. And where you, where you lived around the Delta? Well, I live here and there, I guess. I stay with my families. Mm -hmm. And how many kids do you have? I got one of my own and three adopted, four adopted. And what's their name? Roy, and Rebecca, James, Samantha, and my grandson, Roger. Mm -hmm. I like to go with my brother-in-law, Juicy. Mm -hmm. Sarah, Sarah's husband. Mm -hmm. And where did you guys go? Uh, Whitefish Station, I think. Who were your brothers and sisters? Johnny and Madeline and Sarah. But my oldest brother, Jacob, I saw him the first time and the last time in 1947. <laughs> Where did he go? He died. Uh, he died at Holman, Holman Island. He was married there. And I saw him just once. From Inuvik. From Inuvik? Yeah. yeah. She was only six years old. It's about 16 years ago I've been, you know. I came to babysit. You came to Yellowknife to babysit? Yeah. And you never left? <laughs> he never left. <laughs> now my grandson is 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, never went back. I go home once in a while just to visit. Mm -hmm. I said, got no more. It's like I got no more families at home. And my sister Sarah died too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember her always hunting. Always hunting and cooking. Did she teach you anything? She never teach me what to, how to sew. All I work, work, work. Uh -huh. Her, she do all the sewing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me, I do all the work. What kind of work did you have to do when you were young? Cut wood, get water, saw wood. <laughs> Cook dog pots. <laughs> How many dogs your mom had? My husband used to have five, six. Tell us a little bit about your husband. And my husband used to work. He used to work in a clavic. He used to work in All Saints School, All Saint Church. Hospital. Mm -hmm. What did he do at the hospital? At the um, hospital and school, they used wood. Mm -hmm. He keep the stove on all night. He used to be a night shift. Mm -hmm. When did you meet him? I was forced to get married. Oh. And I was 17 years old. Oh. Almost first time I saw him, I was my brother forced me to get married. <laughs> oh. So you just met him and then you had to marry him? Yeah, and then I never 
never stayed with him, I never sleep with him. <laughs> I sleep with my mom. <laughs> Did you guys used to have fun together? Or? I never talked to him. Either. Oh, I don't like him because I never seen him before. <laughs> 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 you know, maybe one year we were like that. My mom keep talk, talk, talk to me. Finally, we start talking to each other, <laughs> little bit. <tea. laughs> and I don't know how we start sleeping together. <laughs> oh yeah, we always go out hunting. Mm -hmm. Springtime, but I don't like to go with him springtime. I'm too scared in now, when they slatch ice, broken ice, and start walking on the ice, uh -huh. I'm too scared. <laughs> Where did you and him hunt around? Right, no, all over. Um, in my. We stay with Sarah and my sister. Sometimes, springtime, go. What was your favorite time of year to go in the bush? Springtime. I used to love it. My husband put that tent on. Cold in the morning to get back. But he, back home in Philadelphia, did you want to say hi to? Yeah. My niece, Sarah Rogers. And Winnie Ilanik. If I don't say their names, my friends, they couldn't say, you never think of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I can't remember their names too. <laughs> Big hello to everybody, all my friends. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you too. Queen and Nina like to pick it, Lena, and it looked out holy. The little time and Nana like to a lane up to a in Narnic, the Matame, Ubanga Octeke, Robert Kutana. Nakuya mi kunoy lohi.